Are you trying to post your latest Lightroom edit to Instagram and you're curious about what settings are best? In today's video, I'm going to show you guys my personal Instagram workflow for making high quality Instagram posts with just three simple steps. Prepping your photos in Lightroom, creating an export preset to maximize quality, and finally transferring your photo from your computer over to your phone for posting. What's up guys, Reggie B Photo here and welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Reggie Belceros and I'm a wedding photographer based in the San Francisco Bay Area. Alright, no more time to waste, let's get right into my Lightroom Instagram workflow. Step 1 is to prepare your photos in Lightroom. On Instagram, your photo can either be square, horizontal, or vertical. Creating a square crop is pretty straightforward in Lightroom. Just press the R key and select one to one in the drop down menu, and then just adjust the crop to taste. For a horizontal photo, I typically set my aspect ratio to the default of either 3 by 2, 5 by 4, which is the same as an 8 by 10 print, or 16 by 9. But this is just my personal preference. The max horizontal aspect ratio that Instagram supports is 1.91 by 1. Whichever crop you land on, it's good to open up the crop tool one more time and set it to square so that you can preview how the photo will look on your Instagram grid. Non-followers choose whether or not to follow you based on scrolling through your grid for a few seconds, so make sure each square thumbnail on your grid is doing the photo justice. If something important is cut off, then adjust the crop accordingly. If you want to get the maximum wow factor for your photo, choose a vertical photo or use a vertical crop for maximum viewing real estate on a mobile phone. But be sure to crop the photo to a 4x5 aspect ratio in the drop down menu since this is the max vertical aspect ratio that Instagram supports. Step 2 is to create an export preset in Lightroom to maximize the image quality of your Instagram post. As of 2019, the maximum upload resolution that Instagram supports is 1080 pixels wide. For vertical photos, this comes out to 1080 by 1350. For square photos, this is obviously 1080 by 1080. And for horizontal photos, um, it's always going to be 1080 on the width and whatever the height is. But instead of memorizing this or doing math in your head all the time, just create an export preset in Lightroom to do this automatically for you. To create an export preset, right click the photo and click export to pull up the export menu. Because I use Dropbox to transfer the photo to my phone, I'm going to set the destination folder to my Dropbox. I've created a folder called iPhone Transfer, but you can name it whatever you like. I also select to have it create a subfolder called Instagram Post. As for naming the file, you can name it whatever you like, but um, I put a hyphen IG at the end of the file just so that I know it's formatted specifically for Instagram posting. For the file settings, I set this to JPEG, and for the color space, I set it to sRGB. Um, and for the quality, I set this to 100 because I use a plugin called JPEG Mini. In a nutshell, Using their proprietary algorithms, JPEG Mini reduces the file size of your photos significantly up to 80% actually, while preserving the full resolution and quality of the image. If you don't have JPEG Mini, the agreed upon optimal compression setting is around 76%. But again, I set this to 100% for my workflow with JPEG Mini doing the compression work for me. And for the image sizing, check resize to fit and pick the width by length on the drop down menu, then set the width to 1080 pixels wide. For the length, we're gonna leave it blank by deleting the number and clicking to a different field. If you manually put zero in there, it will give you an error, but for some reason, deleting it and clicking it to a different field lets you keep the setting blank to allow for the length to adjust automatically. The PPI is irrelevant here as Instagram posts will be displayed on screens, but I set this to 72 for anything that's on the web or social media. And then I set my sharpening to screen and the standard amount. For metadata, this is your preference. I personally include all, just so I can double check what lens I took the photo on if somebody asks in the comments. So for watermarking, I do not watermark images on Instagram. And then finally, at the end is here is the JPEG mini 
plugin again, which compresses the exported JPEG without any quality loss. So now let's save this as a preset. I'm gonna title it Instagram and let's export the photo. And the next step is to transfer the photo from your computer over to your phone. And the two methods that seem to retain the most quality are AirDrop, if you have a Mac and an iPhone, or using Dropbox if you have any type of other combination than that. I personally have a Windows computer and an iPhone, so I'm gonna be using Dropbox in my tutorial here. So fire up Dropbox on your phone and navigate to the folder that you exported the photo to. In my case, it is the Instagram post folder. So then we click over here to download it and save it to our camera roll. Then once that's saved up, open Instagram and then hit the plus icon at the bottom to create a new post. Select the photo that you just downloaded and if it's not a square crop, hit the expand button on the bottom left to reveal the entire photo. Then hit next, insert your caption, insert the hashtags, tag the location, tag any relevant accounts and hit post. So the truth is, there will always be some sort of quality loss or compression that happens on your Instagram post and for that little bit, um, unfortunately you just have to accept it and move on. But with the method that I showed you here, I can assure you that you'll be retaining the highest amount of quality that you can on the user end of things. If you learned something new, please hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment if you have any questions. In my next video, I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how I edit my photos in Lightroom using my personal presets. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I post a new Fujifilm photography video every single week just like these videos up here. And I post a new photo every single day on Instagram. So be sure to follow me at at Photo. Alright, that's it for me. Remember to get out, go shoot, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Yeah.